I think we are going to hear about Red Bull now. <laughs> Very happy to uh, have you here, Pamendra Singh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, whenever you're ready. Yeah. Thank you so much. So yeah, so my name is Parminda. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at Buck Institute, and a thank you to Alex, Morton, and Daniela. Like they invite, like they actually allowed me to come here, and uh, thank you so much. So uh, I think scientific stories and research are the twin pillars of knowledge and understanding. I think uh, we heard the talk of need, and we all I think agree that we humans are evolved to tell stories. We are a storytelling species. Um, on one hand, we love crafting stories for joy and, you know, entertainment. On the other hand, we uh, make stories and listen to stories for curiosity and maybe some time to motivate ourselves to explore and validate things via research. And the magic happens when you can find parallels between the real-life stories and your research. Uh, one such story is the story from the centenarians of o Okinawa Islands. I like it's in Japan. Uh, those of you who don't know about this island, this island holds the record of being a home of uh, maximum number of centenarians uh, per capita in the world. And uh, according to a very interesting case study, uh, the secret of their longevity actually lies in their diet. And their diet is actually... Um, like very much like like the diet has like too much taurine in it and that's the parallel between this story and my research so uh, what is taurine uh, so um, taurine is basically a uh, um, semi essential micronutrient it was discovered by two german scientists uh, frederick reidman and leopard camelin in 1827 from uh, ox bull and that's why it, it names as taurine from Taurus. Uh, taurine is basically, uh, it's basically present in animal-based product and it's not or almost negligibly present in plants and the reason is uh, the, the enzyme that is responsible for taurine synthesis pathway. So if you see here, the say, uh, cysteine sulfonic acid is required to convert uh, taurine from cysteine methionine pathway and this is actually deficient in plants and that's why plant-based diet has almost negligible taurine content. <coughs> the, the story of actually taurine function is even more interesting. So it was discovered in 1827, but for 100 years nobody knows, you know, what is the function of taurine. So, uh, uh, like, around the, like, uh, when the World War II ends, uh, there was an improvement in socioeconomic development, people, like, the society get more affluent and uh, people need to go to work, they need pet foods. So industry introduced these cat foods. And what they identified that the, with the introduction of these cat foods, uh, suddenly cats show blindness and they are like hitting to the walls and you know, showing blind uh, behavior. So, so society fund the research and uh, they hired you know, scientists to see like, what is happening and scientists identified that actually this cat food diet uh, lacks a very essential nutrient in, in that uh, cat food, which is taurine. And they supplement that uh, uh, cat food with the taurine and they identify, like they, they, they figured out like a 100% recovery of this phenomena. And that study was published in Science in, I think in 18, 1975, uh, almost 150 years uh, after the discovery of taurine. And 10 years after that, another st uh, story published in Science again uh, in 10 years showing the, uh, the importance of taurine in myocardial failure or cardiac functions. So why we chose taurine? Definitely not because of these stories. Uh, so Dr. Vijay Adav actually uh, conducted this study on a mice model that basically have vitamin B12 deficiency. So as you can see, this is the, uh, the picture, histological picture from the vertebra of a mice. This side is a wild type mice and this is a mice with a vitamin B12 deficiency. deficiency. So the black portion is this is bone and the orangish palish color is bone marrow. So more black means more bone density. So you can see that the mice lacking vitamin B12 has low bone density compared to the wild type mice. And that is because they have low osteoblast numbers, though their osteoclast numbers were fine. And osteoblasts are the bone forming cells. So they, they thought that if, if this is due to vitamin B12 deficiency, let's just supplement the mice with vitamin, uh, vit vitamin B12 and see what happens. And indeed, there was a 100% rescue. 
So they thought, okay, it, it seems like osteoblast, you know, proliferation is the issue. So they treated the osteoblast in culture with the vitamin B12, and to their surprise, there was no difference at all. So they thought that something is happening at the endocrine logical level, that vitamin B12 deficiency is de inducing something that is causing this osteoporotic phenotype. So they did a, a metabolomic analysis, and the, the molecule that was significantly downregulated in, in, in vitamin B12 deficient mice is taurine. So they thought that if it is true, then supplementing vitamin B12 deficient mice with taurine should rescue this phenotype. And indeed, it, they identified that actually supplementing uh, vitamin B12 deficient mice with taurine actually almost 100% rescue their uh, bone density by improving the osteoblast number. Next, they test in the humans that uh, osteocalcin, which is a, a hormone for bone formation or an indicator, indicator for high bone density, has a po very significant positive correlation with taurine. So actually that uh, like started the idea that maybe taurine play an anti-aging role because like bone density goes down with age and we know osteocalcin also goes down with age. So first we basically checked the correlation between taurine and uh, like normal chronological age and we identified there is a positive, uh, there is a very significant uh, correlation. Next, from the EPIC Norfolk study, we identified that actually uh, humans with taurine deficiency have uh, like a very significant correlation with the age-associated diseases, and it's not only that. If you if you see like uh, if you see other uh, metabolites related to taurine, like hypotaurine, they also show the similar kind of trend. Then, what happens in the healthy condition? We all we all know exercise is good for us. So uh, this is the data from Hedding uh, Rakish Labs, uh, our collaborator, and he actually identified that even like different uh, kind of people, whether they are sedentary, natural bodybuilders, endurance athletes, or normal sprinters, even if they do a short bout of graded exercise, they show an increase in their taurine level. So all these things are, you know, correlations, and we we know that you know. Um, Correlation doesn't always mean causation. So the question is whether taurine deficiency is just a passenger or a driver of aging. So to test that, we use multiple species model. First, we confirm whether the similar trend is present in mice or not. And after that, we started supplementing uh, mice with taurine with 1,000 mg per kg body weight of dosage. And we identified both in females and males, there was a significant increase in their median lifespan. In females, it was approximately 12%. In males, it was around 10%. We also, because the enzymes uh, uh, responsible for taurine synthesis is actually very much conserved in, at least in multicellular organisms, so we, we see what happens with the taurine supplementation in other model system. So as you can see, uh, taurine supplementation, at least in higher doses, increased lifespan in C. elegans, but there is no difference in, in the yeast. And that is possibly because the enzymes respond, like, it may be responsible for the, uh, the difference in taurine metabolism because the enzyme responsible for the synthesis actually uh, diverged way before in the evolution, evolutionary tree. So now, you know, that, that, that raises another question, you know, uh, like because nobody wants to have more years in their life without having life in those years, especially if you're living in U.S. with bad uh, healthcare system. So, so we supplemented mice with taurine, and this time we used two different doses, 500 mg per kg body weight and 1000 mg per kg body weight, and we identified like a slight reduction in their body weight, and maybe that is due to the reduction in gonadal fat pad, which was observed in previous studies as well. And uh, here you can see, uh, and I, I love this data a lot, because you can see that there is like almost 1.5 time increase in body, uh, bone density in these mice, uh, not only in the vertebra, but also in the skeleton. We also performed the stiffness analysis by femur maximum load and by three-point bend test analysis, and the, both the uh, bones from the taurine-treated mice show positive effect. We also test uh, working memory via wire maze, and the taurine-treated mice were, uh, they performed way better. For glucose homeostasis, we performed GTT and ITT, and as you can see, in both the conditions, uh, taurine-treated mice were healthier compared to the uh, control-treated mice. So now, what is the mechanism? And that is more important, right? So to test that, we used uh, like a knockout approach. We know that taurine is transported into cells via transporter, taurine transporter, also known as SLC-66. 
So we use a mouse which don't have this, like uh, we, we knocked out this transporter, uh, SLC 686, and uh, we confirmed uh, by checking the Torin content that uh, in the Torin transporter knockout mice, the Torin level in different tissues were significantly reduced. And because we started with bone, we first test like what happens to the bone, and as you can see, the bone density was significantly affected in the Torin transporter knockout mice. So to test, you know, to identify the mechanism, we took the osteoblast from these cells, uh, these mice, and we performed the uh, bulk RNA seq analysis. And as you can see, the the the, the three samples aggregated uh, brilliantly, and we identify almost 200 roughly genes which are differentially expressed. When we compared the genes from the literature uh, uh, showing different aging hallmarks and compared it with the aging uh, torin deficient uh, differential express gene, we, we see a, a common similarities. And by using network analysis, we identify the senescence signature was actually significantly increased in those, in those uh, analyses. So we test whether torin deficiency is regulating cellular senescence or not. So to test that, we basically measured the SASP uh, markers in different tissues, uh, bone, muscle, and brain. And as you can see, the, these markers were upregulated in the taurine transporter knockout mice, but after taurine treatment, it was significantly decreased. We also checked this uh, SA beta gel in brain, liver, and fat tissues uh, without and with taurine treatment. And you, you can see like the uh, beta gel staining is also showing a, a positive effect after taurine treatment. Then we basically asked that if uh, senescent cell accumulation is responsible for this phenomena, can we treat uh, taurine transporter knockout mice with senolytics and maybe can improve? I'm not showing the data of Hilespin, but this lifespan data shows that ex there is a slight uh, improvement in their lifespan. This slight improvement also shows that taurine is not only uh, affecting, like exert taurine deficiency is not only exerting its effect via senescence, but maybe hitting other hallmarks. And as we all know, hallmarks don't uh, work in isolation. They are very much interrelated. Next, we, we basically next is another hallmark, which is telomere iteration. Uh, there was no, no difference at the telomerase expression, not even the mice and even the uh, zebrafish. But when we basically treated uh, the zebrafish with taurine, we, we identified that though there is no difference in the telomerase expression, but even if you treat uh, this telomere deficient zebra fish with taurine, you see a significant reduction in SA beta gel staining. So that, or like it's, and the, no, generally the telomerase deficient zebra fish dies within like 40, 40% 40 dies with, after 10 days of their fertilization. But you can see the taurine treatment at, at least rescue of like little bit of that. So this suggests actually telomerase deficiency induced deterioration in these organisms is at least rescued by taurine treatment. And next, we test another hallmark, which is uh, nutrient sensing and stem cell exhaustion. We all know that uh, intercellular communication is aging is compromised, and one such example is accumulation of pro-inflammatory cytokines. And as you can see, the pro-inflammatory cytokines are increased uh, uh, in aged condition, but after taurine treatment, they significantly reduced. We also check the stem cell uh, markers, uh, uh, LGR5, in gut and skin cells, and we, we confirm in both the uh, taurine transporter knockout mice that these uh, stem cells were exhausted, exhausted in the uh, taurine deficient condition, but when we treat the mice in the age condition, there was uh, at least a restoration of these uh, stem cells. So now next, more important question is like, what other marks or hallmarks are changed? In the respect of time, I'm not showing all the mechanism that we tested, but this, this uh, hallmark is very interesting. So we know that taurine actually uh, goes to the cells and we show all these hallmarks, but one interesting thing that we found is that taurine uh, cytosolic, at least some pool of cytosolic uh, taurine goes to the mitochondria and bind to the uh, transfer RNA uridine region at the wobble position. And that actually helped in the translation of ND6 uh, protein that is an active subunit in uh, electrotransport channel complex one. So we argued that or if taurine deficiency is driving this thing, there, there should be an effect on a taurylation of this uh, transfer RNA. And uh, we identified that actually in age condition there was almost like 60% reduction of this taurylation effect and taurine treatment 
uh, rescue at least half of it. And you can see by, uh, by we, we also checked by Western Broad the expression of ND6 and uh, MTO1 and showing that actually uh, aging also reduced the, trans the, the synthesis of these downstream uh, proteins. So we next check like if that is true, then it should affect the ROS signaling as well. And uh, from the muscle, we isolated mitochondria and measure the ROS accumulation, and it shows that taurin treatment significantly decreased this ROS accumulation in the mitochondria of muscles. We also measured uh, the protein carbonylation and lipid peroxidation in liver, which are indirect markers of oxidative stress. And we also checked that the, the markers of uh, mitochondrial biogenesis and uh, ATP production uh, in the brown fat and it show improvement after taurine treatment. So in summary, uh, we identified that taurine supplementation makes an animal healthier, uh, maybe by affecting like multiple hallmarks of aging. And uh, at least it show a lifespan extension in worm and mouse. And we also know that it associated with uh, taurine deficiencies associated with poor health in humans. But the missing piece in this study is the randomized clinical trial, which is required uh, before somebody should start taking Red Bull. So I would like to acknowledge all the collaborators and funding agencies uh, for this work, and it's, it's amazing like how collaborative the aging field is and how helpful they are for conducting this study. And as Steve Jobs said, one more thing. Uh, during my postdoctoral research, I started uh, looking at menopause-related disorders. We know menopause can cause multiple uh, disorders, and one of them, which recently got published, is the acceleration of Alzheimer's disease. So to identify the mechanism, um, we performed a deep proteomic analysis of a hippocampus from uh, sham and overectomized mice, which is a surgical mouse model to study menopause, and we identify significant protein, uh, differential proteins, uh, almost 102 uh, differentially expressed protein. And interestingly, when I did the CAG pathway analysis of the down-regulated protein, and you see what is the top hit, it's the taurine and hypotaurine metabolism significantly change. So if you want to know more about this, my post number is 85, I'm happy to talk about it, and thank you so much. Thank you so much.